And hi everybody. Uh, my name is Lauri Kajan, and uh, I come from Chispo. We are based in Finland. And uh, today I'm going to present you something about a QGIS plugin development. And uh, well, basically how to set up a project, plugin project, and uh, environment for that easily. I hope so. Uh, yeah. First, something about Chispo. Uh, we are 25 people. Uh, we do consulting, developing, training. Also have as uh, support for for customers. And uh, do all. I think it's at least most of. Most of the things, maybe all, all the things, uh, with the uh, open source software. Yeah, and we like to talk open source. So, uh, why I'm having this talk? Uh, previously, setting up a plugging. Uh, project and uh, developing environment has been quite tedious, at least uh, on Windows. Uh, there I have a little, bit, little note that uh, this is a... The presentation is uh, has uh, a lot of Windows specific things, but uh, if you are on other OS, then it is still relevant for you, and uh, there is going to be some nice tips also for, for, for you. Yeah, um, on Windows, at least, there has been a lot of manual work to set up the environment, and uh, when you develop a lot of plugins, uh, it makes that up even more tedious. And uh, if you don't have any system for, for se setting up uh, plugins, uh, every plugin ends to be a little bit different and uh, different tools and, uh, and it's uh, hard to maintain. Yeah, so uh, to make our life a little bit easier, uh, we have developed some tools, development tools uh, at Gispo. Uh, and now I would like to share those tools and our ideas also for, for you to make hopefully your life easier too. And uh, I would like to see more well-structured plugins out there. Uh, there are in the plugin manager, I don't know how many hundreds or are there now even more than thousand plugins, I don't remember. But uh, most of those are just uh, playing the only the needed ones and uh, developing those as a developer it's not so um, the ex experience is not that that good to develop those uh, pl plugins so uh, what is a um, QGIS python plugin Basically, it's just a directory. There needs to be a, a file called metadata, where you specify the name and uh, author and uh, your home page for, for the plugin and uh, things. And uh, then the, where everything starts, the init 
Pi. It loads the uh, plugin from through that file, and uh, the, all the then all the rest necessary Python files and uh, some UI files. And uh, when you publish those, it's it is just a compressed folder, a zip file. So they are not needed for to make a plugin. So how hard it could be. <laughs> so I think that it's there. It's much more needed to give a good developing uh, developing experience for the developer. Here I have some ideas what I think that uh, needs to be set up for the not specific QGIS plugin, but uh, I think that for any Python project. The coding, you could do that in any text editor, but uh, when you are learn and uh, are used to do that with a real code editor, IDE, uh, there's not going back. And uh, the good practice is to use a virtual Python environment for developing, uh, so you don't mess the Python environment inside the QGIS. You should always have a virtual environment. And to make sure that your plugin works and uh, works also after you modify some files, there needs, it's useful to have a unit testing included and also some way to debug your code, not just uh, print statements uh, inside the code. code. Uh, the, if the de debugging is set up right, you, can, you could do that uh, debugging in the code editor and not true not with the print statements. And uh, then there should be some linting and formatting done. Uh, linting is those rules that are uh, how you should write the code, which functions or uh, style of code you should uh, use over other ones. And formatting is basically how you, where do you put your next lines? Do you use a next line after every comma or how do you format the code? Uh, none of these changes the <laughs> functionality of the code, but uh, it makes it uh, much more nicer to work with. And uh, then also type annotation checks should be used, I think so. And uh, then also version control and uh, uh, CI thing, automatic tests, and uh, also the publishing the plugin to the QGIS plugin repo uh, should be automized also. So um, there needs to be, be a lot, lot of things in the plugin project. So we have developed uh, Template for that. 
It's openly available at our GitHub. And what it actually is, it, it's a, you can do setup uh, interactively. It asks you questions that are about your preferences, how, what uh, features you want to include to your um, project. And you use that with a cookie cutter templating tool. You can install that uh, from uh, with pip, or there may be the recommend way how to run all the command line tools with uh, Python is uh, install it with uh, pipx, then it makes a isolated environment for, for its uh, command line tool. So first in install a cookie cutter and then run, run that uh, second command and uh, how it looks like. First it asks the name of the plugin and uh, then the project directory, what's the name of the actual plugin package. And uh, if you want to add GitHub actions for the CI. And uh, about the license, if you want to have a sample um, processing algorithm in your plugin. And here it asks also the linting, which kind of linting uh, rules you want to use. Uh, there's a project called Hatch. It has um, well created linting rules. There are more than 500 rules in that. So I, I like that one. And then it asks, um, um, says uh, what, to, what to do next. I could have uh, included this also as automatic steps, but uh, it installs some things from PyP, so I didn't want to call the, to the internet without user permission. And uh, this is how it looks inside the VS Code. As you can see, there are quite many, many files in the project. And without this template, you should write those by yourself. So that's why we made this uh, template. And here are our developing uh, dependencies. And uh, this is not the only, only uh, template out there. There is uh, the original one, pl uh, plugin builder, uh, created by the grand old man, Gary Sherman. The, guy who started the QGIS project. And then uh, there is also uh, other cookie cutter template by Oslandia. They have some similarities, but uh, they have made some different choices. You should uh, check that also. So uh, now we have them project, but uh, how to set up the actual environment, how you use the IDE. So the IDE must know which Python interpreter you to use and where the QGIS uh, Python package is located at. And kind of know how, how is the QT API, it's a binary 
package, so the VS Code, at least, doesn't know how the API is. So there is also Python package for that. Um, normally, uh, previously, uh, ID has been started with a startup script or a batch file where it sets uh, environment variable variables. So it uh, could uh, find the right paths. But, uh, and uh, the virtual environment, uh, as I said, that should be used and uh, all the developing dependencies should be installed inside the virtual environment instead of the QGIS Python environment. So those doesn't mess up there with the QGIS environment. Well, uh, this uh, creating this burnup is has been uh, difficult on Windows. The OS G04 W Windows uh, has some custom structure, so you have to create that with a right executable, not the one that finds from the bin directory. And there, then there are also some other things to keep in mind. So uh, to create the virtual environment. We have also developed a tool for that. Uh, it uh, works with Windows, Linux, and uh, there is uh, already a pull request for Mac OS. So it's a single file. You could embed that to your existing project, and uh, or you can install that also with a pipex and then inside the plugin project, you just call the, the file and how that looks. Uh, it detects all the QGIS installations from your system and uh, then you just choose which one to use for developing the tool. Probably you should uh, use the LTR version to make the, uh, your plugin most uh, compatible with the older versions. So what uh, that tool actually does, it uses the same interpreter as QGIS, loads the, uh, also all the dependencies, Python dependencies as a system site package, and creates two files. And uh, those two files you could do manually also, but uh, there is also always some uh, issues with the users to get their paths right. And uh, to deploy your plugin, just create a symbolic link from your developing directory to the directory where QGIS loads the user plugins. And after that, uh, you should enable that plugin from the QGIS plugin manager. And uh, there is no need to copy any files or any other things to do. And if you make uh, mod modifications to the plugin code, just use the plugin reloader plugin uh, to reload your plugin. <laughs> and the future, the template is quite old. I know that it needs some refreshment. Maybe we are considering migration to use copier 
And the Venom Creator, it's instead quite new, needs more testing. And uh, yeah, please test those, uh, share your ideas, send some issues in GitHub or pull requests. Those are really welcome. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot for this insightful talk. Now we have the opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, great, thanks, thanks for your talk. Um, I'm just wondering, are there any plans or is there any assistance to help um, publish the plugins once they're developed to the QGIS repository or is, is that simple enough already, that step of the, the process of creating a plugin? Yeah, uh, there is a library for that. Um, it's uh, not, it's not included here. There, there is a QGIS uh, plugin C, CI tools, or I don't remember, but it's, I think it should be included in that uh, plugin template I showed you. Yeah, and uh, at least here is the configuration file for, for the tool. I don't remember. Now I don't have a, the library project here, but uh, there is a GitHub action to do the, uh, the publishing. Okay. So I have another question regarding the um, uh, IDE or the text editor. Um, like, what is your recommendation? Or you have you tried various ones? Like, there's of course like VS Code or uh, PyCharm, or maybe it's just some. Notepad++, plus plus, I'm not sure. So what is your recommendation or what what, what have you experienced with? Uh, there are many who use PyCharm. That's a really good one. I like VS Code. Uh, it's free, so you don't have to worry about licenses. And, so, and it's um, easy to just load and start to work with. Okay. All right. Then uh, thanks again. Yeah. So thank you.